this is about interception. Interception is a very important part of the surface water cycle. Super. So the reason why I'm making this presentation is because in the timed pressured situation of the exam, candidates sometimes confuse interception with infiltration. So when you've watched this, you won't ever do that again. These are the three questions that I'm going to take you through. Interception is defined as the storage of water in or on vegetation before it reaches the ground surface. So here we have a leaf, it's rained on the leaf and water droplets have formed on the surface of the leaf and they're being held there by the leaf. The amount of interception will depend on the shape of the leaf, it will depend on the form of the leaf. You can see here this leaf has got specific runnels in it where the water could be stored whereas this one from an older tree is relatively flat. All kinds of vegetation will intercept some water but trees are the most effective interceptors and this depends on their density. So if we look at this coniferous tree like a Christmas tree one which is evergreen all year round it is able to intercept around 25% to 35% of all rain in a year. By contrast deciduous trees like this one which lose their leaves in autumn here you can see the leaves have gone red they're going to fall off they will only intercept between 15 and 25% of annual precipitation. Um, and so the type of the tree, the density of the canopy, and obviously the density of the trees in a plantation, in a forest, is going to affect how much water is intercepted by that tree. The duration and the type of precipitation that fall also have an impact. So let's imagine it starts to rain in this forest. The leaves start to collect uh, water. As the rain proceeds, more water is added to the leaf. At a certain point, that leaf becomes too heavy and all of a sudden the leaf will suddenly droop and then we get leaf drip. The process of leaf drip will empty the interception store. So if it's only a light rain shower, interception can be close to 60 or 70% of that rain shower. But if the precipitation intensity and um, duration is long and intense, then we will get less interception because it will then follow the pathway of leaf drip or even stem flow and will reach the ground surface. Secondly, in boreal forests, like those in Siberia in the northern hemisphere, a substantial amount of precipitation falls as snow. During the winter, the snowfall accumulates on the branches of the tree and the trees are structured in such a way that they actually catch a huge amount of that snow. It's estimated that between 10 and 20 kilograms of snow can be stored in the branches of these trees um, per metre squared of forest. So this is very important and it means that the precipitation is stored and then in spring it's suddenly released in spring snow melt which has an impact on the river levels and on the rest of the catchments hydrology where the trees are. Interception loss is the process by which a droplet of water, which has landed on the leaf, then goes back into the atmosphere again via the process of um, evaporation. This is controlled by temperature, higher temperatures, more evaporation. It's also controlled by wind speed, higher wind speed, more um, evaporation, more loss of water from the interception store. And thirdly, it's controlled by humidity, because in conditions of high humidity, the evaporation rate is lower. Human activity affects interception in a number of ways, um, and you can probably think of lots of these, but here's two. Number one is deforestation. If the forest, is, uh, forest cover is lost, obviously there's going to be no foliage to catch in the incoming um, precipitation. Therefore, we see more surface runoff. More surface runoff leads to increased water in the river channel leads to increased risk of flooding like we've seen in the tropical forests and the Madeira Basin in the Amazon. Secondly, many areas of forest have been turned over to, for agriculture. For example, he, here we have one of the world's most used products in food, the soya bean. When the soya bean is planted, obviously it, it's able to intercept incoming precipitation. But when it's harvested, then there's no interception whatsoever. So in when cereal crops of all kinds are harvested, this mean, means that the sunlight then reaches the ground surface and that can lead to baking effects, then reducing infiltration, which we'll look at in a later presentation. 
One of the fruits which is really, really well liked in my household is the mango. Here's a picture of a mango tree, um, here's a picture of an unripe fruit, and here's a picture of a mango which is ready to eat. Let's look at the data on the mango tree. These two graphs are taken from some really recent research done in 2018 on the mango tree. So the mango tree um, was um, if involved in two precipitation events, event one and event two. Study these graphs and then I'd like you to suggest reasons why the blue line, the interception in this tree, were different for the two different events, rainfall events. Rainfall is shown in red. Press pause now, have a think about this before you move on. So a couple of things to notice here. On the y-axis, we've got two different scales. In event one, around 30 millimetres of rain fell. In event two, however, around 79 millimetres of rain fell. And we can see that event two, there's a much bigger gap between the amount of rain that falls and the amount of rain that can be intercepted. So we're going to assume that where this occurs, where this level flattens out here for the interception, we were assuming there that probably that's because the interception stores on the mango tree, every leaf is full. So at this point, after this point, we're expecting that leaf drip processes and stem flow processes will be more important. You will have noticed that the red line showing the rainfall shows a different pathway. Here the onset of rain is low and the amount of rain is also low. And so most of the graph of interception tracks alongside the rainfall and the mango tree is able to absorb almost all of the, um, of the rainfall storm in this case. However, when the rain is more intense, the tree, there's a bigger gap here between interception and precipitation. And the reason for that is because the lot of the rain is running off the tree, it's running down the stem, and it's been involved in leaf drip processes. In summary, interception is affected by wind, humidity, and precipitation. Coniferous trees like this one, evergreen trees, are better at intercepting uh, rainfall than deciduous trees. Complex stratified forests like the tropical rainforests are much better at intercepting um, rain than soya plantations um, or palm oil plantations. And human activity reduces interception. Urbanisation, farming and deforestation will all have this effect.